smaller series of works now, which I'll just show you on the um, camera. And uh, that's seven more done recently of the smaller studies. It's great fun doing those smaller studies because one's able to really play with these colours um, very loosely in a small, fast way and experiment. It uh, doesn't really matter so much when you're using, doing a larger painting. I think you're possibly a bit more careful about um, and restrained about this. And as you saw in those, I did two cafe scenes, these two uh, as well. And I want to now go on to some small, but slightly larger, so still for me quite small, uh, cafe scenes. We're still painting about the uh, Argentons of Cruz, about the, the little town there, I'm going to hold the exhibition. These are the last in series now for this exhibition next spring. So a couple more cafe scenes and a street scene and so on. And we finish the whole series for the moment and I'll move on to something else. Um, so let's, in this case I'm going to show you these. I didn't, I, I didn't film the other ones, I'm going to show you these. The other ones are painted directly onto the board, so we had a coloured ground. Here I'm going to be painting back onto the white canvas again in a very loose, slab-like way, uh, impressionist way. And we'll see if we both enjoy painting in that way as much as I have with these past ones. Slightly larger. Now, as I said, I'm going to work on this very loosely. Um, I was using a small quarter-inch brush before, slightly larger painting, so I'm going to go up. I'm going to remain with the filbert for the moment, and I'm going to go up to a half-inch filbert. And uh, these are my two photographs. This is the one we're working on today. So we're going to paint in this jigsaw method of um, whacking in just block shapes, uh, putting the right colours and the right shapes in the right places, relevantly one to another. In other words, they're correct one to another. First thing we're up against is a white canvas. And the white canvas will make things look very dark at first because we're painting against the white, so immediately we're up against the fact that it might appear to us that things look too dark. But straight away, I'm going in some quite dark turquoise. I'm going to add a bit of white to it now to get a bit more body. It's a little bit thin, even though it's supposed to be a reasonably heavy body, this. I do want a really lovely, deep, rich turquoise here. Look at these colours, really slab on and enjoy them. You enjoy your painting, what it's about otherwise. And the whole window I'm painting in here with it, because I'm going to put the darks in later with a little flat, flat brush. And I want that to be a little more yellow, that turquoise. Let's the brush off really dry, get it clean again. Get rid of the water if you brush, you don't want to thin your paint down, not for this job. A little touch of lemon yellow into my Sarah on the end there, it should be clean so I don't want the paint showing through underneath that one, clean strokes into this. And is it anywhere else? Yes, again, we'll go back over here, it comes in here, these figures here. Are the light. I prefer to paint the lights in at the end, I prefer to, dark, to work with my mid-tones and darkers first of all normally. But let's not worry about any rules and regulations at all, we're just going to paint. So we're playing the warm blues against the cool blues. And talking about warm blues, I'm going to take some ultramarine directly now. Push that down. I can put some more ultramarine into my palette, and I noticed that as it came out, it came out like sausages. So I want to push it down a bit, otherwise it'll start drying out on me. And we'll just whack that in there because there's a beautiful, deep, rich ultramarine shape just there, and that comes also into here a little bit as well. Now look at that variety of blues we've got immediately. And is it anywhere else? Well, we've got it on our brush. We'll have a look and see. Maybe it's coming up in here. It's more of a grey there, so I'm going to take some of the magenta and add that to it. Give myself a purple grey. Beautiful colours to enjoy. I'm going to change this colour slightly later, but that's just blocky. And I need to get rid of it at the moment because I'm not using the coloured ground, which I really should have done this, but I'm having to um, get rid of this white canvas by putting in block colours as quickly as I can, just to, just literally to lose this. Let's look at this brown grey over here, and I should take some, literally take some brown, some burnt sienna, and add that to that grey I've just been using. A little bit more water, brown grey there, a little bit darker, so I a little bit of purple to it. Maybe a touch of, a bit cooler, maybe a touch of um, a, a Prussian blue there, just to make this lovely rich. And that colour is quite a useful one actually. I'm going to start using that. So that's Prussian blue, 
bit of magenta, blue grey as well as not too cool, but uh, um, these lovely. And I've added a bit more magenta to this colour now, just just filling in this area. And I'm able to leave this light behind. I just know where I'm going. That's what it's about, really. It's only yellow, purple, grey now. Put a little bit of um, little touch of lemon yellow into it, just to make it a tad greener and then a little bit warmer with some more magenta. Let's just come down this shape here. You see, when I paint out the white, how quickly things change. Because the white was really overpowering and overbearing. Come back down in a minute. Maybe that needs to be a little bit lighter, that, um, that line I've just done. Pink coming on there. This is some opera rose with a little magenta. I tend to find the opera rose tends to disappear. So I'm not too keen on it as it is. Go for the deeper colour. I'm going to take a lovely deep rich purple, add a bit more brown to that again. And just come into here with that. Look at that lovely colour we get now. Purple and brown together. Tip the brush, bring a line down here. That's again the beauty of the film because we can use the we're kind of flat as well, man. But with these flat brushes, with the square I mean, with the flat brushes we can um there we go. A little bluer, some more brush and wasn't quite blue enough. Look at the subtle difference now in that warm, if you can see it, and this one where I've got the cooler colour going. And then that same lovely deep colour is coming down the edge of this. So what I'm doing is painting like a jigsaw. I'm putting my colours into the correct shapes, correct places, and hopefully my objects are just going to appear. Some deep cadmium red, almost a little crimson, and really get a lovely warm, and that will make the other colours seem pinker. You see, look how that works. So the other colours suddenly become much pinker now against that. Let's block this in and we'll put some pure colours over the top. Now, is it anywhere else? Yes, while well, we've got it on the brush. That rich red. You see I've used the white of the canvas there to allow my colours to be a bit brighter. It shines through. This is one thing about white. If you want a brighter colour, then the luminosity of the white with these semi-transparent paints, the acrylic is opaque, um, but they're semi-transparent, will make them a bit brighter. Let's look at these background greens for the trees. We've got some sort of yellow ochre and sap green mix going on there. And we can start to make the shapes of the, um, the leaves a bit more now. I'm going to just keep in my vertical strokes for the minute. Then some of the deeper blue we had earlier. So I've still got the colour there in my palette, hasn't dried out yet. Start to work some of that in. On my brush, so is it anywhere else? Yes, we want to be painting green down to here. I've got to lose this canvas. Very tempted. Before I do my drawings in the future, I think I'm going to use coloured grounds a lot more than I have been. And there's even some of that green coming into the umbrella up here. We find these colours, reds. So let's just paint those in, leaving the reds just showing a bit. Just the tip of the brush. You see how I hold my brush at the very end and just flick the colours in. And then there's a, a colour that's a lot warmer um, going on here. So I'm going to put some more yellow ochre into this bit of colour where the um, uh, coat comes across here. And we're painting in negative shapes as well as positive here. So uh, as we get rid of the white, the whole painting just starts to appear out of nowhere. Here. Yeah. That's more that colour, a little bit of yellow into it. Things should just start to appear for us. That light work there now. We're going to do a very light turquoise just here. Bring that turquoise back again. Colours coming in here, but they're not too sharp. I'm going to make these a bit sharper, a bit stronger a bit later on, but at the moment I just want to lose the white and just find my base tones here. Almost cream at the minute, just taking some, making some very light greys with lemon yellow and a little touch of the just nice loose strokes. Got dark there to be coming down through here a bit more so I'm going to bring that umbrella over here a bit more now. And you see the sky though it still looks dark against the white it's all starting to make a bit more sense now. So a lovely green here that I've been waiting to pick up upon. So a very light 
um, emerald, which shows sunshine coming through the canvas up here. Beautiful but here as well. I'm talking of greens. Um, I've yet to really work up these, this bit of letter in here. Lovely colours. Flicking them in. Back to my greys again. Colours onto them. I just need to lose this horrible white. I'm just going to paint the whole of that out with the white for a minute. So what I'm doing now is just indicating the background of the street. There's some blue going on it. Let's wax some colour onto that. I'm going to put a little bit of serol in. So some fur turquoise into that just to cool it down a bit. That's more like it. Just want to get it covered and out of the way. So I'm using a pink. Magenta blue mix here. And then the, the chairs are, can just be indicated. The tip of the brush just indicated. And at last we can start to see wood for trees. In other words, I can start to pick out my shapes here more. It's not always how much you say, it's how little you say, it's how you say it. And uh, we let the, the viewer do some of the work, we're not going to do all of the work for you. Go darker with some Prussian blue and ultramarine, uh, sorry, Prussian blue and burnt sienna again. Brush it away here, just find these colours, these lovely darks here. And I haven't quite brought out yet. So a Prussian blue and pure and um, some burnt sienna to really pick up on. we just got to put the right shapes in the right places and hopefully a chair will appear and all sorts will appear. So sticking at the end of the brush, holding the end of the brush, not getting up tight with it. So we're playing constantly with our negatives and positive shapes. But her with a mid, mid grey at the minute, we'll just try and find the shape of her there. I've got to come back towards my highlights now. I'm going to start getting lighter and lighter and start to bring out these figures with these lovely light and shapes with these lovely light highlights. A little touch of lemon yellow in there now to get something more cream. Lighter colour to come in across this business. I haven't gone off from the half inch brush yet, still using this half inch fill, but so you see how much we can do with it. A little bit more water on my brush if I want to get a thinner line, I've got to make sure my, my paint is liquid enough to the sunlight there. And a little bit in her face here as well, I think, just indicating the feel of that chair there. It's all, it's all impressions, it's all indications. Hardly, you see, I can just indicate lettering. I don't have to paint it all in, I don't. So. You see how that, that magenta there, that cream has sunk? I said it would do. I know that particular paint, so I know I've got to put a lot more of it on when I use it. You see, we've always got a painting done there now. Um, in, in this way of painting, you're the boss. You can, um, you can finish whenever you feel it's, it's done. You choose it, sir. It doesn't control you. you just flow with it. Even the tree, we'll just find a bit of that tree growing there. With a few flicks of the brush. Now, cut it up a smaller brush to hopefully finish this off. Because I just want to work on a little bit of detail here and there. I'm trying to take a little round brush now. And we'll just come back to this lettering from earlier. Just try and bring it out a fraction. And then down to the opposite, down to the dark that I made earlier. And we'll see again if we can just indicate some thin, that bit thicker, indicate some lettering here. A 
this is where I want to be a little more detailed because those few little bits of lettering are a focal point. They're going to bring our eye just up into those. And focus our eyes there uh, so that the rest becomes slightly blurry to us. Now, in some of my paintings, I start using black at this stage, and I'm very tempted to do that here. So, I'm just going to deliberately take a little bit of black. I want to just enhance some of these areas like this. See what I mean? I hope. So to bring out just some of these dark shapes, these negative shapes again, just to bring her out of it. I have to go a little bit lighter after this because the, some of the highlights have literally disappeared. So I'm going to have to come back a fraction. There's a rather nice, I don't want to, again, not to overdo this, but there's a rather nice cross here for the pharmacy that I want to just put in there. Right, as I was saying, I just want to bring out now the very lightest colours I can. So I'm going to take some pure white, a tiniest touch of lemon yellow to make the lightest cream I can, and just come back into some of these highlights on the lettering and, and the figures and so on here. Just bring them out again a bit because I've got a little bit lost. You see, and that brings it out again. And here, and behind her here, much, much lighter. Bring that sunlight forward. Anything that might be just reflecting on the glasses here or the... These little marks that could just make or break a painting. So, it's just there. It's not as loose as I'd like. Um, I think I, I, the, the coloured ground I've done better. Uh, but we're on the way with it. Maybe a little more sunlight in the tree. Yeah, that'll do. Otherwise, I'm going to get start fiddling with it too much. Let's just get a signature onto it and we'll go from there. Well, let's take a closer look at it. Some of the colours we've used. first one of the two down, I will start on the second one. I wasn't quite so happy with the vibrance of the colours in that last one. This one probably has even duller colours. What I want to do this time then is I'm going to put a glaze of um, red over this just to give me a starting colour rather than that dry white showing through. I should still see my drawing through that so we'll do that first and then we'll see where this one goes. And I'm going to use the flat brushes of this one instead of the filberts. dry so we'll make a start on this paper. We'll see what difference there is by using a ground and we're still using the body colour. We'll use that over the top but this time instead of using the filbert I'm going to take a, a half inch flat. Quite different again. Let's build it up with that first of all. So we'll start with this lovely light turquoise again. You can see the texture of the canvas just glowing through a little bit there. It's already nicer to work on than the plain white. You can see my problem now with the white is that it glares, it glows. And uh, in this painting this way I can see much more what I'm doing here. 
Yeah, I think I prefer this way with a, with a coloured ground. That was magenta and white. Now I'm going to add some yellow ochre to it, to the same magenta white mix, to get this lovely orange gold colour down here. Across there as well. Just by giving an impression. A little touch of green to that now. Gives it a slightly darker feel against the red. We want to go darker up there too. So let's take some of this colour and start to find some of these tones. Now, this beautiful bit of rich, deep, warm, dark here. I'll take some purple and some red with that. Put the brown again and get a lovely dark happening here. Deep red, purple colour. Coming up into there. If I've got it on my brush and it's anywhere else, I'll use it. I want to keep them simple, so just block shapes. If we get these shapes correctly, the thing will just come together a bit later. Across the chair there. There's only a subtle difference, but it's enough for me to pick up on. I'm gradually mixing various cool and warm greys. Here I've got some turquoise, magenta. Let's take some actual purple and add some white to that. A really strong blue purple. I'm going to take some ultramarine now. Light shine behind the canvas, but I might have to put a bit of board behind it, so what I'm doing. And again, hopefully you start to see the painting appear now as I get the lighter tones worked up here. It's nice when things just appear out of the canvas like this, I feel. And I start to pick up on these individual colours. Um, just enjoy. I'm going to go down brushes to a slightly smaller flat square. Make sure your brush is really clean before you put it back in, otherwise you'll be in trouble. So down to a quarter inch. Let's just start looking at uh, some of these lovely dark that comes over this, ch this chap's head. Just cutting in there to bring it out slightly maybe there. And we'll use the lights as well to do the same. Be bold and loose with your strokes, just, just I'm holding the brush at the end so that I can just Play these lovely colours out. And just by putting darks against lights, um, the right shapes to the right shapes are, it just starts to appear now. Now, I've got some of these darks. I'm going to take some black, which I don't normally use, with a little bit of Prussian, just to take it down a fraction and come back in and hit some of these darker shapes here again. So I'm now finishing up with some white and some lemon yellow again to get my creams. That's what we hint at sometimes and you don't have to say it all by any means, just, just hint at it. And it's quite a pretty little picture. You see we can use, we can let the uh, red glow through it, that's the thing. And I reckon that one's virtually done and perhaps a little bit more Paint just in some of these areas here. I'll use my small brush for it for the minute. Just to bring these forward a little bit here at the edge of the table. I think rather than sign it that side, I'm going to sign it this side this time. Now I find that in some ways more attractive. It's a bit slick, but more attractive because it holds together better with the colour coming through. What do you think? <laughs> 